direct TV bundle. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Good evening and thanks for joining us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Nicole Griffin. Tonight, a campus is on alert. Four incidents of sexual assault have already been reported this semester at IUPUI, including a fondling incident just Friday night. RTV6 reporter Graham Hunter is live tonight near University Boulevard and West North Street, where these incidents have been reported. Graham. Nicole, those incidents all happen right here around University Tower. This is one of the residence halls here at IUPUI. Now, this is a very busy part of campus. We've seen students walking around here all afternoon long. At this, the site of now four incidents of reported unwelcome sexual physical contact. The first incident happened shortly after the semester started back in August when someone engaged in non-consensual sexual touching of the victim while they were sleeping. The most recent incident occurred right out in the open Friday night as the victim was walking down the sidewalk. Someone grabbed her breasts and escaped on a bicycle. IUPUI staff has sent notice out to students regarding each incident, reminding the student body to be aware of their surroundings, to travel in groups, and to let their friends know where they're going. These disturbing incidents have started a conversation among students around campus. Definitely on alert. I've been talking about it with my roommate and stuff, just being careful when we come back from class because a lot of us have late night classes and it can be scary. Um, I know I try to either be with the person or on the phone with someone. And the emails, all they say is they're investigating, but what else are they doing? Like, are there more police officers on campus? You know, I know there's the Safe Walk program, but are they, you know, letting more people know about what it is and how to get to it? We have reached out to IUPUI for updates on these cases to find out if arrests were made or if suspects are still on the loose. We have yet to hear back. Coming up tonight at 11, we'll have more on the campus reaction to these incidents and what staff at IUPUI is telling students to do to stay safe. Working for you from IUPUI campus, Graham Hunter, RTV6. All right, Graham, thank you. Well, another home game for the Colts this afternoon. The Raiders came in from the West Coast and proved to be a bit too much for the horseshoes. Dave First and Brad Brown are, are at Lucas Oil Stadium with a recap of all the action. I'm old, so I'll go back to the old slogan for the Raiders that they had. They were beating their chest for decades about their commitment to excellence. It, it, it was a joke for a while, but recent, this looked like the old Raiders football. Heck, we even had a Raider get ejected in the game. <laughs> like today. old days. <laughs> like the old days. They took it right to the Colts, and the Colts, they got a lot to work on as they the season moves on. For these guys. Tell you what, the Raiders came in here all sorts of fired up. A ton of fans in here were in silver and black. They were all over downtown this weekend. Came in here, got that fast start early on, really put the Colts in a hole that they had just had to spend the day digging out of. I know it's a cliche, but they had the Colts on their heels from the get-go in this game and really didn't do much in the second half. And Derek Carr looked like he's all-world. Josh Jacobs was averaging like six yards a carry. The Colts defense, poor tackling. You could tell they, they missed guys like Darius Leonard, Malik Hooker, but they were out man in this game. And they really were in kind of that, that early start. They were just looking to get some momentum going in the right direction. Once they finally got that first score on the board, the little TD from yeah. Brissett to Doyle got him on the board. He kind of started to see it going, but then kind of fizzled out at the end of the half and a full reset there when they went to the break. Big picture offensively. Yes, Jacoby Brissett didn't have the game he had maybe a week ago, but he's got to get some help. They, yeah. The Colts had five drop passes in the first half alone. The dude needs help back there. Yeah, it was clear they were missing T.Y. Hilton today. It was really big, yeah. but they didn't have him out there. Looking for somebody to make a play at some point consistently this afternoon. They made that little comeback at the end to kind of keep things interesting, but just could not get going when they needed to. And, of course, it's the NFL, so it got close in the end, but it didn't matter in the end. As the Colts lose this one, 31-24, a lot of head scratching going on in the locker room afterwards. I didn't do anything. I didn't contribute. I didn't help my teammates. I was shitty today, and it sucked. Um, it sucked to watch. It sucked to be a part of, and hopefully next week I'll do something more. Big picture, what, what happened today? Um, we just <laughs> started crummy, you know, all around. Um, played crummy, you know, and when you don't, you know, you don't play well, you get beat in the NFL. Everybody's good. Um, that's just the way it goes. Not to get out of a hole like that. It, I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah, yeah, Certainly the NFL. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always tough. Is tackling more of a mindset or technique or, or what? I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, tackling, uh, 
it's always you got to go in there like, yeah, I'm going to go in here and tackle this guy, you know what I mean, full force. And then it's technique, you know, trusting your keys. The things we do in practice that, that prepared us to tackle, you got to go out there and do those things. It does beg the question if Derek Carr can do that to that defense this week, they've got some guy named Patrick Mahomes to deal with next Sunday night out in Kansas City. This team has to get better and better in a hurry. And that's a team that can put them up fast. We've seen that. Yeah. Two and two for now. The Colts for the day off tomorrow. Back to work on Tuesday. For Brad Brown, day first at Lucas Oil Stadium. And all is quiet at Lucas Oil Stadium now. The parking lot's got wet a couple times today as we've had some rain move through. That's significant. Only four occasions this month have we had measurable rainfall. Here are your headlines. Next two days, record temperatures expected. Strong cold front comes in Wednesday and Thursday and will bring a shocking change for the end of the week. We had rain roll through southern Marion County. Had a nice downpour in Beach Grove. Now just to the west of Greenfield. Other more numerous showers, maybe a rumble of thunder between Rockville and Vetersburg, then Lafayette to Crawfordsville. This is pushing toward Frankfurt, Delphi, just north of Lebanon as well. Here's the big picture. Most of the activity will be to the north and west of the metro area. Isolated shower thunderstorm certainly possible. Coolest temperatures to the north right now, 93 in Evansville. The battleground is right here, the dividing line. So for the rest of the evening, 20% chance of thunderstorms, except for where we have those already, north and west of Indy. All right, Kevin, thank you. An Indiana company is recalling packages of ready-to-eat meat products due to listeria concerns. The products come from Fisher Packing Company in Red Key, and they were shipped statewide. They were packaged in late August and sold under the Fisher Meats brand. The products include ready-to-eat roast beef, smoked ham, smoke, smoked ham shanks, and Canadian bacon. They all have the number 74 inside the USDA mark of inspection. If you have any of these products, throw them away or or you can call the company at 260-726-7355. There have been no confirmed illness reports. Knightstown police are looking for a man who rammed his vehicle into a gas station, apparently because he was upset over an issue with the ATM inside. This happened around Saturday at noon at a Speedway gas station. Witnesses say the man got upset that an ATM would not dispense his money. So he got into his truck and rammed the building twice before fleeing the scene. A 13-year-old boy was inside the store near the front of the building when the incident took place but was not injured. If you recognize the man or his truck, call the Knightstown Police Department. Police in Indianapolis have safely located a missing woman who went missing on Thursday. There was an urgent concern about Cynthia Mullins because she's diabetic and requires medication, but Metro Police tell us they found her this morning and she's going to be okay. Reducing violence one child at a time. Tonight we are learning about the mission behind Indie Heartbeat. The community-based program put on by Eskenazi Health in the Marion County Health Department is focused on ending youth violence. This weekend the group celebrated progress being made by the youth they serve by hosting a celebration in partnership with ML and Trip Outreach Center. Indie Heartbeat's goal is to reduce crime and arrests among the youth and young adults in their program. These are youth that are referred to them from Indianapolis Public Schools, Metro Police, even the Indianapolis Housing Agency. They have all experienced some sort of trauma in their life. Cora Tate is receiving services now after she says she tried to commit suicide earlier this year. I've been through a lot back in my like days, like at home, school. And Indy Heartbeat helped me a lot because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. 99% of the families we work with all have dealt with some sort of violence or trauma. Uh, most of them are, are individuals that have dealt with violence directly, um, homicide, and in some cases we have those that have had um, members, lost members of their family due to suicide. Indy Heartbeat helps break the cycle of violence through prevention and rehabilitation. Coming up tonight at 11 o'clock, we'll break down how they accomplished that goal and what they plan to do with a $60,000 crime prevention grant they just received from the city. Coming up, the impeachment inquiry on the minds of most Americans. And tonight, we're getting new insight into public opinion about what's going on. 
Surviving domestic violence begins with a simple phone call, and sometimes it's not so simple to get those phones, but there is a local effort to connect victims with the help they need. Kevin. And we've got some downpours just northwest of downtown Indy. More thunderstorms in Illinois. We'll talk about where they're headed tonight and wait till you see the big temperature swings ahead. With more work to do. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Now to politics and the Democrats plan to move forward with the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. So much is happening, including a new poll just out this evening. Let's get the very latest now from ABC's Rachel Scott. President Trump's attorney taking aim this evening at House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff following Democrats' plans to move forward with the impeachment inquiry of his boss. You said you wouldn't do it. I said, you said you will not cooperate with that. I Adam said Schiff. I will consider it. I have to be guided by my client. If he decides that he wants me to testify, of course I'll testify, even though I think Adam Schiff is an illegitimate chairman. He has already prejudged the case. Schiff firing back. He seems to think that uh, that I'm the judge and jury here. My role is to make sure that the facts come out. Uh, if it were to lead to an impeachment, and I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, it'll be the Senate that makes the determination about whether the president's conduct uh, should result in his removal from office. According to a new ABC News Ipsos poll, nearly two thirds of Americans believe President Trump's conversation with the leader of Ukraine is a serious problem. But only 17% said they were surprised by the president's actions. Before hitting the links for the second time this weekend, the president retweeted a post by the GOP chairwoman threatening congressional Democrats in 50 Trump-type districts. That threat, Republicans argue, supporting impeachment will lead to defeat. Some Democrats are hoping to ready the articles of impeachment by Thanksgiving and send them to the full House before Christmas, ahead of the 2020 primaries. Congress has just started a two-week recess, but this Friday, the House Intelligence Committee plans to hear from the Inspector General who escalated the initial whistleblower complaint as a matter of urgent concern. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Washington. Rachel, thank you. Being able to connect with friends, family, and even law enforcement is extremely important for survivors of domestic violence. Today, money raised here in Indianapolis will help provide survivors with cell phones. TCC Gives is a nonprofit that started in 2017 and was piloted in Indianapolis. Since then, they have expanded to six different states and have given 770 survivor smartphones and data service. Ahead of today's Colts game, they held a tailgating event at Crane Bay Event Center. TCC Gives says providing a phone to a survivor of domestic violence helps provide the safety and security they need to start over. When you have no communication outside of the environment you're in, any way to be able to connect, um, it doesn't matter what size the phone is or what brand the phone is, it's a way to get help. Especially if you're starting over and you're trying to find a new job and a lot of times these women, they're coming out of very controlling relationships and those phones can be dangerous if they're attached to an abuser. So having that safety and security of their own device that's theirs and gives them peace of mind, that, that does a lot. TCC Gives partners with six different domestic violence organizations in Indiana, including the Julian Center in Colburn Place. If you want to help TCC, which stands for the Cellular Connection, they have 22 Verizon stores in Indianapolis that can accept your old phones. Time is winding down for teams to register for a fishing tournament that will benefit the Henry County Dive Team. The goal to replace crucial equipment they need to do their jobs. The team has several pieces of equipment that are currently outdated, everything from their regulators to the van they drive to the dive site. RTV Six spoke with the deputy sheriff who says the equipment is important to their safety when diving under the water. It's very important. I mean, anything goes wrong underneath the water, you've got to have, have something down there to be able to breathe. It, it, it's not up here and you can get to, to safety in an instant. You're down 20, 30 feet, maybe even further un underneath water. Mm -hmm. If something goes wrong down there, it's going to be very bad. So having the best equipment we can have and up-to-date equipment is very important just so we can stay safe while we're down there. 
The tournament is October 12th at Summit Lake. 50% of the money raised will go to the dive team. The other 50% will go to the team that catches the biggest bass fish. We have a link right now on how you can register on the RTV6 News app. Let's get a check of your forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. And thank you, Nicole. We had rain today and it's still raining in spots. I'll show that to you in a second. Temperatures next three days very warm. I think we get record highs tomorrow and Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, still warm when we begin to transition. And then look at this slope. You don't see this very often. Just woof. Temperatures just fall off from Wednesday to Friday and Saturday morning. Temperatures will be in the mid 40s. Monday, Tuesday, right at 90 degrees. These are our anticipated highs. Then by the end of the work week, temperatures will be in the 60s, about 67 for the high temperature. We've got summer and fall both in the forecast this work week. There are temperatures that are forecast and the record highs. 90 degrees next two days, the record's 89 degrees, the warmest temperature we've ever recorded in the month of October 91. That's certainly in play. Let me show you. Over in Illinois, we've had a couple of severe thunderstorms that have held together for a while. We'll keep our eye on that. Our severe weather threat's relatively low, but we may inherit those in the next couple of hours. They're sitting west then of Champaign right now. For us, these are non-severe, but you're getting some rumbles of thunder there to the north and west of Indianapolis. Maybe you hear that between Frankfurt and Lebanon. Nice little downpour, some lightning there. Just north of Rockville, northern portion then of Park County. That will move toward Vetersburg and Crawfordsville and may clip, uh, clip other portions then of Vermilion County. Temperature 87 in Terre Haute, 91 in Bedford. You notice the warm, moist air southern half of the state. Cooler temperatures for now north, but what happens is we'll pull the warm, humid air all the way to the north over the next 24 hours, and then we'll be in this bubble of dry weather, but very warm conditions. Temperatures around 70 in the morning, afternoon high is tomorrow, right at record warmth, 90 degrees. Temperatures anywhere in the state, well above the average of 72 degrees by 20 degrees above average in spots. As you can see, we're dry Tuesday. Wednesday, the chance for thunderstorms will return by Wednesday night. That sets the stage for the transition. Significant drop in temperatures from our 89 Wednesday to 76 Thursday and in the 60s for a high Friday. 40s on Saturday morning. 40s? That's right. Oh. You'll need to zip up. <laughs> <laughs> Start to warm up by the end of the week. Unlike how we were yesterday at the parade, it got hot. It was warm. It was 87 again today. Wow. All right, Kevin. Thank you. A government agency has a warning for pet owners why they why they say you should stop using a certain brand of dog food right now. Jeep Adventure Days. Attention pet owners, the Food and Drug Administration is recalling some dog food over salmonella concerns. The agency is warning you to stay away from performance dog brand frozen raw pet food produced on or after July 22nd of this year. It says samples tested positive for salmonella and listeria. The FDA says performance dog raw pet food produced after July 22nd, quote, represents a serious threat to human and animal health, end quote. Paper or plastic? The next time you make a cup of tea, scientists say you might want to pick a paper tea bag or just go loose leaf. A new study put four different plastic tea bags to the test. Researchers removed the tea from the bag before putting it in boiling water. They found one bag released billions of so-called microplastic particles into the cup. Apparently, we already eat quite a bit of plastic as it is, enough to equal the weight of a credit card every week. At this point, scientists are not sure how those particles could affect our health because there haven't been enough studies on the issue. Now is the time to start tracking prices if you plan to travel anytime around the holidays. Travel experts say airfares will soon start rising for Thanksgiving and Christmas time. They recommend you book trips for either holiday before the end of October. You can use price watching software like Google Flights to help. The experts say prices could change up to 100 times between now and the holidays, but eventually they'll only be going up. We'll be right back after this break on the 2019 Pacifica. 
The focus for many volunteers this weekend is on giving back. It's a time to get to know your neighbors and take ownership of your community. People are busy this weekend with Indy Due Day events. Today, volunteers from U Indy helped Auntie Bames Child Development Center make some major improvements. Around 20 volunteers helped lay mulch on the playground at the center near 30th and Emerson. They also focused on classrooms inside by painting and helping restructure the rooms. The program director says they are also creating a community garden to help the families they serve. 4628 is also in a food desert. And so what we're going to do, along with the help of the children, we're going to be planting fruits and vegetables here in which the community can come and receive some of those fruits and vegetables because we don't have any local stores here in our area. Everything is closed, so we are in a food desert. The director says once the garden is complete, children will be able to take fruits and vegetables home to help feed their family. And I know they were doing this today a little bit in the rain, Kevin. Uh, not perfect timing for no. painting, but good for the garden uh, <laughs> when that's all you're working on. Okay, heavy downpour southwest of Crawfordsville. Some rain between Frankfurt and Lebanon. Keeping our eye on two storms in Illinois, probably a little before 8 before we would inherit those. Those have been stronger, so an isolated severe storm possible west. Have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.